Hello everyone and welcome to the game and match a lot of you were requesting. It's Andrei Esipenko versus Daniil Dubov uh, and it's a game from round 5 even though we are already in round 6. Uh, so a lot of you guys uh, wanted to know what happened in this match and it was a really really crazy one. Uh, the two classical games they played ended in a draw then they played two rapid games they also ended in a draw and now we are in the blitz section as the little robot uh, in the corner says and this is the first game of the blitz and uh, as it would seem the most important one and uh, uh, neither of them lost a single game so far. So very, very interesting. Uh, it's a really cool game. Uh, so let's check it out. Esipenko with the white pieces opens with e4. Uh, we have e5 by Daniel, knight to f3, knight to c6, and now bishop to c4. We have knight to f6 going for the two knights defense of the Italian game. And now d3. We have bishop to e7 and both players castle. So this is all very standard stuff. Uh, knight to c3 and now d6. Preparing to develop the dark square bishop. Uh, we have a3 and the bishop to g4 now. So already black has a threat since the uh, light square bishop is on c4. It's not on e2. Knight to d4 would pose a lot of problems for white as you would eliminate the, the, the knight here. Probably with the knight and then bust open the uh, white's king's defenses. So instead we have h3 not allowing this. Now the bishop has to uh, either uh, retreat or capture on f3. We have bishop captures queen captures and now knight to d4. So Dubov gives up the bishop pair early on. Uh, but he gets a very active square for his knight and he also frees up the c6 square to uh, improve his activity in the center then you can play c6 maybe b5 a5 uh, maybe even d5 if white allows it so queen back to d1 you have to guard the c2 pawn and now c6 as planned we have bishop back to a2 now you don't want it here uh, so white can uh well start advancing with tempo uh, and now knight to e6 now the knight can even be shifted to f4 and not only that you have now a firm grip on f4 so if white wanted to play f4 uh, it's not going to be that pleasant so here uh, bishop to e3 and knight to e2 are known moves but uh, in this game we have rook to e1 and it is only now as of move 12 that we have a completely new game uh, last video, uh, I didn't mention at which point in the game we had a completely new game just to see if anyone was even paying attention to this, but I see a lot of you in the comments were, uh, well, uh, very, very, uh, you know, uh, upset by this, so uh, it is now as of Rook 1 that we have a completely new game. Uh, we have queen to c7, Dubov continues development, uh, develops the queen to c7, connects the rooks, uh, and bishop to e3. White, uh, of course, does the same. We have rook a to d8, and queen to f3 now. Uh, here, uh, what do you play? Well, uh, you have to decide whether you want to start pushing on the queen side, or do you want to uh, not do anything on the queen side uh, and play something like g6. Uh, this is what uh, Dubov had in mind. He wants to place his king uh, on g7, uh, sort of to improve his position. But it, it, all in all, it, it could be considered a weakening of the position. So rook a to d1, and now king to g7. Uh, we have knight to e2. If white uh, doesn't really try anything, uh, then the game just goes nowhere. Black will be very happy with a draw here and then uh, look for his chances in Armageddon. So white has to allow something like d5. He plays knight to e2. Now he wants to shift his knight over to the king's side. Dubov, of course, takes this opportunity. He plays d5 and now knight to g3. Uh, we have knight to d4 now attacking the queen and the c2 pawn, so uh, Esipenko should definitely capture it, uh, which means he also has to now part with his bishop pair. We have bishop captures e captures, and now as the this pawn is uh, under attack, he just goes back. Knight to e2. e5 is always an idea to keep the uh, black pawns doubled, but he chooses knight to e2. Uh, let's always remember uh, this is a blitz game, so of course you don't have all that much time. Uh, d captures on e4. We have d captures on e4, and now what you play here bishop to d6 uh you could play c5 and just defend the pawn but it's uh, not not a very uh, active move and uh, well dubov is not uh, not the kind of player that plays such a move white can just continue playing with maybe e5 c3 try to undermine the center uh so instead dubov gives up a pawn to uh, fully develop his pieces he plays bishop to d6 uh Isipenko captures it knight captures on d4 and now rook f to e8 and now all of his pieces are developed uh and uh uh, well, uh, he has to prove that his uh, pawn sacrifice was uh, uh, was of some meaning. So here we have c3, white strengthens the, the knight in the center here, uh, and now bishop to c5. So 
uh, that bishop is now on a very, very nice diagonal. Uh, we have b4 pushing the bishop back, bishop to b6 in now, bishop back to b1, adding another defender here. As the king moved from g8 to the bishop here isn't really uh, that scary of a piece anymore. Uh, and now, only now, Dubov says, all right, you've expanded here quite a lot. Now we're going to try to undermine those pawns uh, with a move like a5. Uh, we have queen to e3, now uh, adding more support to the knight here, but also at some point you might be interested in, in a move like f4. We have king to g8, uh, getting off of this diagonal, so you don't have to worry about uh, you know anything in the future, and now e5, attacking the knight. We have knight to d5 by Dubov, uh, and now queen to g3. Uh, and now, you, okay, now the queens are kind of x-raying each other, and it's going to be a, a very useful tool for either white or black, depending on uh, what happens, but it's going to be very interesting. So a captures on b4, a captures, and now Dubov has to play something. And the, the strongest move here is actually to take advantage of this uh, situation here, so f6 really does wonders for black. Now, the problem is, uh, even though the white queen is defended, you can't really capture the pawn here, because it loses by force. Rook captures, rook captures, uh, and now we're going to trade trade queens. Queen, queen captures, pawn captures, and now knight captures on c3, and you've removed the defender of the knight. The knight is attacked twice. It's also pinned. The king is in g1, and that's just it. So after this uh, f6 move, if it was played, uh, white would have to settle for something like knight to f3, and then Dubov just uh, wins back his pawn, and the game continues. However, Dubov said, why wait? We could win a pawn back right away, and he played knight captures on b4. And why wouldn't you, if the pawn captures, uh, then we're just gonna, you know, uh, win our piece back with uh, rook or bishop captures on d4. The problem is, one, uh, uh, white has a very, very interesting move, uh, a Zwischenzug, if you will, so feel free to pause the video here and try to find this, uh, well, very, very uh, uh, interesting move by White uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on realizing that the only problem here is the knight on d4. So if you realize that, then of course you start looking for ways to do something about that, and then you find knight to f5. It's a great move. It gets your knight out of the d4 square, which uh, where, where it was a target. And here it's a great square. It cannot be captured. The g-pawn, of course, is pinned, and the knight is now coming to d6. Now, Dubov has to do something. His knight is now under attack, and the, the, there is no... Uh, target on d4 for him to capture afterwards. So the question is, do you go back right away or do you first capture on d1 and then go back? Well, Dubov said, uh, all right, I've equalized material. Let's just trade a pair of rooks. We have rook captures, rook captures, and now knight to d5. But now this knight comes to d6, and this is now a monster knight. And uh, even though the material is completely equal, uh, white's position is much better due to the knight on d6. So here we have rook to e6, the rook is under attack, and now the other piece uh, finds his way all the way to f5. Bishop to f5 pushes the rook back even further. We have rook to e7 and now comes c4 challenging the knight here. So not a lot of good squares for this knight. Uh, b4 pretty much the, the only square. Everything else is covered here. The f6 is covered. This is covered. This is covered. There's nothing here other than knight to b4. Uh, and now, uh, well, pretty much anything is good here for white. You could uh, even start with h4, h5 capture here. Sacrifice the bishop capture with the queen. So you, you could even do that. Uh, but uh, here we have knight to c8, and this is um, basically the cleanest way to, to go about it, uh, but it does offer black some counterplay, so here uh, the problem is your rook is under attack, and if you just move the rook, well then we play knight captures on b6, queen captures and now e6, and this is now winning for white, there is nothing you can do, uh, if f captures on e6, we simply play rook to d7, now threatening bishop captures, pawn captures, queen captures, and then checkmate. So black captures the bishop, but now queen to c3, for example, uh, going for this checkmate. Or you could even do something like queen to g5, uh, pretty much the same. Uh, not, sorry, not queen to g5, queen to h4, uh, going for uh, queen captures on h7 check, and there's no defending this. If h5, queen f6, and you're getting checkmated, there's no uh, avoiding this. So uh, after this knight to c8, there's really no time for Dubov to react to, to this rook. So he simply played queen captures on e5. Uh, and now the rook, of course, uh, uh, is uh, captured with check. So knight captures on e7, queen captures, and now bishop back to g4. So now Espenko uh, is up the exchange, but down a pawn. However, it's going to be very, very difficult for, for Dubov to do something about those pawns. If he could get uh, these pieces away from here, maybe push b5, create a pass pawn, maybe uh, you could 
put off put up some resistance uh, but it requires extreme precision and a move like knight to a6 might uh, prolong the game a little bit for black and maybe over some chances later on but it's a blitz game of course uh, you can't see everything so queen to e4 was played here uh, but now we have queen to b8 check going after the pawn here king g7 queen captures on b7 and now the bishop is attacked so bishop to c5 uh, sorry bishop to c5 uh, and now queen to b8 so what do you play here uh, well, Dubov played knight to c2. Uh, he's trying to create something here. He does have a bishop and the knight and the queen, you know, very close to the white king. So maybe something is possible. Uh, but the just bishop to f3, not allowing any tricks. And uh, e even if you tried something like, for example, bishop captures, king captures, queen e3, check, king to f1. There's no way to continue this. It's uh, just a very, very, very winning position for white. So instead, after bishop to f3, uh, Dubov moves with queen captures on c4. But now queen to e5 with check. We have king to g8, rook to d8 with check, and now bishop to f8 blocking. There is no other way. And now everything is pretty much winning for Esipenko. So he simply played queen to e7. And he was in this position on move 43 that Daniel Dubov resigned the game. Uh, and uh, as this is the first blitz game, the second one ended in a draw. It means that uh, Esipenko is the winner of the match. And he, uh, well... Uh, proceeds to the to the fifth round of the FIDE World Cup. Uh, he already played a game yesterday. We didn't cover uh, uh, any, any games from yesterday, but he played against Magnus. He he got a draw against Magnus, uh, and the Magnus had the white pieces, so it was a very very good achievement for him. We'll see what happens today, and can he go even further, uh, or you know just you know uh, he he just has to beat the world champion. So we'll see what happens. Uh, but yeah, here you resign. There's no defense against just queen captures and f8. There's no way to prolong the game. So, of course, it, it would be pointless to continue. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's the game. Uh, a lot of you have requested uh, uh, to, to, you know, uh, see what, what happened. So this is what happened. It was a really, really crazy, crazy match. Uh, Yispenko had a really, really good chance in the classical uh, section. He was uh, really, really doing well, but then Dubo somehow again miraculously escaped, but uh, it all uh, caught up to him and Yespenko was the winner now in, in the blitz section. Uh, so yeah, uh, yeah, like I said, in, in the next game, uh, Dubov uh, had the white pieces, but he couldn't really achieve anything. Uh, Isipenko just got a really, really, really good game and traded off everything really quickly. It was a really quick end game and just everything got traded off. Dubov uh, had, uh, uh, was a piece up uh, in the end, but it simply wasn't enough. There were no pawns and, you know, uh, no way to win a game with a king and a bishop. Uh, so yeah, once again, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Jan de Reuter, Happy Birthday Grenki, uh, Mika Kennedy, uh, Michael Kelberer, and uh, Tom Derolo for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the FIDE World Cup, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.